The North Coast 500. Think of it as effectively one lap around the very top of Scotland. A tour of the Highland coastline that takes in some of the most spectacular scenery to be found anywhere on the planet. And some of the best driving roads that you could ever hope to discover. Launched as a tourism concept only in recent years, the 500 begins and ends near the city of Inverness. Somewhat surprisingly, my esteemed colleague Steve Sutcliffe has never been. And I detect doesn't really see what all the fuss is about. Oh dear Steve, we need to change that right away and show everyone why this is a must visit destination for any driving enthusiast. So, Steve will head northwards first, tracking the eastern coastline before going across the top and then down. On the other hand, I'll head west before turning northwards past Gaerloch and Olapul and we'll then meet halfway on the iconic and highly distinctive Kailescu Bridge, built at a cost of £4 million and opened in 1984 by the Queen. Taking on the challenge of this incredible road in a hot hatch like this one, well, it does actually make a lot of sense. Now, much of the route, particularly towards the beginning and around the top, is made up of far sweeping A roads and the surface isn't that great. You get potholes and gravel as well from the erosion over the harsh winters. A hot hatch, responsive, agile, compact in size, is a really good blend of qualities that works all the way along the route. So I'm still not absolutely sure why Adam has insisted that I come all the way up to the north coast of Scotland, but he promises me that this road is spectacular. So far, I haven't found it that spectacular, but the really good bits are to come, I gather. Right, wait for it, wait for it, just around this corner, and now. This is why I've brought Steve here. This is what the North Coast 500 is all about. Just magical. It's my belief that the best of the route is the western side. Lush landscapes and brilliant roads replaced by wild mountainous areas the further north you go and eventually becoming narrow coastal lanes around the top western corner. Earlier on, you have the choice to do what we call the Apple Cross Loop, a narrow mountain pass, unsuitable perhaps for a wide car and busy in holiday season. But the views are incredible, and the road around the peninsula afterwards, well, that's not too shabby either. Oh wow, okay, okay Adam, I think now I am beginning to understand why I've come all this way. There's a long way to come to enjoy a fast car on a fast road, but my goodness me, this is a piece of road. Interesting car to drive on it as well, the i30N Fastback. It doesn't sell in as big a numbers as the regular hatchback. It's about, I think it accounts for about 35% of sales, but I actually think it's the better looking of the two. It's no different to drive. You've got all the same modes, same suspension setup, same everything basically. It just, it just is styled a bit differently. It's quite cool because it, this car was developed on the ring. We know that, and this road actually feels quite like the ring. So, as a combination, they really work.
Wow, what an amazing piece of road. Unbelievable, actually. Apple Cross Pass. A continuous series of left and right and left and right. Awkward crests, many blind and strange compressions. But remember what I said earlier about a good hot hatch being a wise choice at times on this route. Well, this is very much one of those moments. Look at that, I love that view. I love that view. One of the things I really like about the i30N, fastback or hatchback, is its range of personality, which you can dial up and dial down to suit whatever road you're in perfectly. You never really want to use end mode on the road, so you always want to be in normal mode, to be quite honest, just to chill the suspension back down. But when you do come across a really nice, super fluid, super flat piece of road, like this here, it's kind of tempting just to pop it into sport or even end mode occasionally and I think it feels fab that you can do that. The other elements that are just peachy about the i30 in fastback or the hatchback, the gearbox, the auto blip function, the brakes, the brakes are really good on this car I think and the motor's strong, the chassis is brilliant, the e-diff is fab too. It's a pretty sophisticated piece of kit, and you can actually feel it tightening the car's cornering line, and you've got to really commit to the throttle nice and early. But if you do, it really generates grip. Not just on turning, but mid-corner and on the way out. It works beautifully, the E-diff in this car. So how do you get on, Steve? Pretty awesome, I have to admit. The first section ain't isn't that great, no. this direction. But once you get onto this this road like this, about I think it's about 50 miles back that way. Flipping egg. <laughs> Serious it, piece it? of road. Yeah, well, the good news for you is I really believe it just gets better when you go that way. Really? Yeah, yeah, I reckon. Well, I think you'll enjoy going that way, mate. Alright. Really. It's pretty special around here, isn't it? I told you. I just want to say thank you for bringing me all the way up here. You know I was pretty cynical about coming all the way up here. No worries. These things are pretty good as well, aren't they? Don't yeah, you? it's just, it's a really good hot hatch and that suits this road. Just really matches it well. Just a nice sweet blend of performance and grip and all that stuff. Yeah. Without going absolutely ballistic. Yeah. Proper hot hatchbacks, aren't they? Yeah, exactly, agreed, yeah. Proper road too. Yeah. All right, enjoy that bit. I'll enjoy this bit. Enjoy. Cheers, mate. See ya. Coming to this part of Scotland never disappoints. The roads, the scenery, the warm welcome. The North Coast 500 remains a road trip you have to do at least once, wherever you come from. <laughs>